Uh, George, we want to get back to our big story now this morning, the alleged corruption case against State Senator Leland Yee. He is accused of drug running, money laundering, and a murder-for-hire scheme. Uh, we want to show you where the FBI searched all over Northern California yesterday. This is what we first brought to you on the Crom 4 Morning News and the uh, uh, first uh, idea that we had about the raids that were going on, uh, starting with Senator Yee's office in Sacramento, also raids around the Bay Area in uh, Chinatown, as in San Mateo as well. So joining us now is our political analyst Michael Yaki to talk about that and Michael you're just saying you've gone from shock and awe to horror and disgust really. Yeah I mean really when you first of all when you first read about this complaint you, you think someone has someone has betrayed the public trust but really what grabbed everyone's attention was the fact that somehow or another Senator Yee was what was allegedly involved in procuring an arms deal acting like an arms broker uh, and that that sort of was the big salacious part of yesterday but upon thinking about it and really going deep into this it goes into the revulsion of of the public trust because there as I was telling Mark during the break there are sort of two sides of this there is the legal side and he is presumed innocent and he and he will have his day in court and the FBI will have and the Justice Department will have their job to try and prove the case but on the political side you have the all these statements in the affidavit the statements are probably taken by wiretaps by body wires of Senator Yee and regardless of whether or not those meet a legal standard for the for the different crimes that were involved the statements taken by themselves coming from his mouth are just horrible I mean they're horrible in terms of in terms of the betrayal of the public trust on two levels one is the idea that you connect your what you normally do as part of your official duties I was an elected official for five years I served an elected official for seven years there are things you do because that's what you're elected to do you give a proclamation to groups that are worthy you work on legislation you help people out because they're your constituents or they represent an interest that is okay important. wait so give me one give me one that you read that you were like what he said what well I think I think that the, the easiest thing is the idea that he would give a proclamation to a group that has arguably everyone everyone in San Francisco knew had had potential criminal ties and to give an official proclamation to that organization the Gihong Tong is crazy. You don't do that. There, I mean, there's a there's a line that you don't cross, and the fact that he was willing to cross it uh, allegedly for a $1,600 campaign contribution is is ridiculous. The second thing is the idea that you that just facilitating a meeting, which you do as a normal matter, of course, as a public official, had a price tag to it of $11,000 or $10,000, is is ridiculous. Is is also horrifying as well because part of what you do, you're elected to be a facilitator. You're elected to help your constituents, help businesses out help people get through the government hurdles you're not there to say well you know for me to actually do this to call the Department of Public Health um, right like a I menu of services exactly right? that's you like choose from A choose price. from B right. here are the prices right. you or order accordingly that's not how you're supposed to work but the second level the second level is the idea that you present yourself as someone and you're doing the exact opposite when you present yourself as an advocate for gun control when you present yourself as someone who who talks about transparency in government and you're doing everything saying everything to evade that and when you're doing when you're saying stuff to people that that talks about well I talked to someone about rocket launchers and, and importing rifles and and oh by the way why don't you start with a hundred rifles I have someone who's available who can, who can get you a hundred rifles right away that that's a betrayal of who you are as a politician and to the groups and organizations who stood behind you and that's the that's the kind of stuff you can't recover from whether or not any of these meet a legal definition of of the uh, of the of the US code he's going to fight that out in court tooth and nail but politically it, it just fills you with a sense of a sense of, of deep of deep disgust that this is what this is what happened and it makes you realize you never really knew you may have never really known this person at all and this brings to mind Ed Jew who just returned to San Francisco right. a former supervisor served five years in federal prison well, on former, corruption former aide former aide to, to supervise to then supervisor right. so talk about the connection between the two of these men. well well this is interesting I guess you know one can talk about how how, how karma play, play, may play, be playing a role in this. The person who went to the FBI on Ed Jew's alleged, I mean, an alleged extortion of bubble tea people in San Francisco was Lee Lin Yee. And part of, part of Ed Jew's defense was, what are you talking about? I learned this from Lee Lin Yee. And, and, and you saw in an article yesterday in the Chronicle about how the, the attorneys for Ed Lee, for Ed Jew, talked about 
that they were that they were trying to tell them. You know, you got to look at Leland because he took, he got everything he le he learned from this from Leland, and maybe that planted the seed in the FBI for the next for the next sting operation. I mean, this is this is huge. I mean, this is this this goes beyond just just. There's no such thing as run of the mill corruption. All corruption is bad, but this is this is raised to a whole new salacious level, and uh, it, it's tragic. It's 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 it's. I feel I feel horrible for Leland's family and and his, and his children. Um, but in terms of uh, the, the stain, I guess, on San Francisco, this is something that I think we all have to bear. And quickly, uh, where does he go from here as far as keeping his position and as far as his run for Secretary of State? Well, he has to quit. He has to, he has to quit the Secretary of State job for sure. And he has to resign from the state Senate. And it's not simply because of these allegations, it's not just because of the allegations, but because he has a job to do. And that is, he now has his freedom at stake. This is his sole purpose for the next how many months or even years has got to be his legal defense and protecting his family. He cannot do that if he's and run, run, I mean, first of all, his credibility is shot anyway. So what, what's the point of staying in, in the race? You should, all he can do right now is, is focus Focus on his legal defense and and be with his family because that's where he's needed right now. All right, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, that, Michael. Uh, Michael Yaki, on your perspective. We continue to follow the latest developments, and there are a lot, like you said. Uh, you can read the full criminal complaint on our website. Uh, we have profiles of Senator Yee there as well, and you can also see uh, some interesting video with other players involved here, an anti-crime video. So, like you said, saying one thing and doing another. You can see it right on Crown4.com. We'll be right back.